Going back to what you were saying about discipline in an organization. Well, I'd say, you know, from being like a teaching point of view of having sometimes 170, 200 students when I combine my high school teaching with my college teaching, there's tests to be marked, there's papers to be marked. So part of the discipline slash organization is having stuff where it should be. Like I have five classes across uh, the board in high school, so I have a different folder for each class and make sure my papers are there and um, understanding that stuff has to be marked in a timely manner and has to be entered in the computer in a timely manner. So it's a matter of, of knowing that I have my organization and that I'll work on one pile at a time and work on that pile and finish it and work on the next pile. And to some people that seems like natural. But if anything, I would jump to um, something that I guess anybody would learn the hard way, but the easy way is here. Now let's get back to the computer, go on YouTube, on um, talking about how to paint a room. Everyone knows how to paint a room, but not everybody knows the most important thing that I've learned, how to prep a room, on why the preparation's so important, or why it's so important to recess, paint the tape, and mask off mm -hmm. the areas you're molding, and to put down actually your proper floor covering, and to make sure that the paint has been shook and properly mixed, and to make sure you have the materials, and so on and so on. And I think that's part of the same thing called discipline or organization. A lot of people like to skip the preparatory steps in anything. As, as you've seen and I've seen, a lot of students do that in basic yeah. classwork. Not understanding, as I always default to the marathon and the discipline organization, of, it's pacing and training, it's doing certain things in certain ways over the course of a series of days, which basically is almost anything in life. If you are doing classwork, if you're building a house, if you're running a business, there are certain things that you need to do, that you need to pace out, it needs to be organized, and that's, I guess, what's called discipline. But then I've had some people misinterpret discipline as discipline, as giving harsh punishment to someone. I'm disciplining you, I'm hitting you with a bat, yeah. you know? Uh, and that's not what it is. It's that internal, as you know, being a former, and hopefully still, track athlete. Sometimes. That, yes, doing when you have spoken to me many times about working out your own personal weight training program, um, I could maybe lay out a program for you, but I'm not doing it, you gotta do it. Yeah. And if you're doing it and you're following the program, well that's discipline, that's organization. And that's something that I just try and apply to everything, because I also find it's just more efficient. Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes it gets confusing on my own too, but that's it. Well, that's my definition yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you said so you said discipline and you said being down to earth. Would you say those are your two main well ways of living? I, I would say so. I, I definitely would say so. Um, also um, making making time for, for things that really matter to all of us. Um, we have three children and we're all adult and my older son has two children, so that's his grandpa. Um, but also understanding, like for example, on, on Thursday night, my, my son teaches, and I will go there at night to, quote, babysit them, which mm -hmm. means down to earth. I get down in the earth, <laughs> on the ground, and I play with them. Yeah. We do puzzles and stuff. Um, and part of the discipline is, well, if it's Thursday night, I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. So as long as I, I know that set in my head, it just becomes part of routine, becomes part of pattern, uh, in the same sense that you know, still through all of these years, we have a family dinner on Sunday afternoon. My mom still cooks. So just the organization of knowing, well, where are we going on Sunday at three o'clock? Well, it's my mom's and I'm gonna be there, my brother show up with his wife and sometimes my, my nieces and nephews. Um, but that's also part of the whole thing too, is just understanding there are a few different things we need to do in life. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, with the other things, um, sometimes just go home, plop on the couch, and sit next to my wife, Selma, and hey, you know, currently right now, we are going into the old TV show, The Twilight Zone, and we're watching all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, well, they, they call it binge watching now. And it's just some things. We take that half hour, we watch an episode, we try not to do more than one, mm -hmm. to just know that, okay, when we sit down, and tonight, Twilight Zone, okay, and then click it on and spend that half hour, and, then just, you know, if, if there's another thing on occasion, so 
maybe we'll do a movie or go out to eat. It's typical yeah. stuff, but okay. making sure that um, we're also enjoying it. That's all it's about is enjoying it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So I, rem so I remember you said, obviously you said discipline right now, obviously you said being down to earth, and you seem to have created a legacy of teachers. And not only a legacy of teachers, a legacy of leaders in general. Have I? <laughs> I would say so. You tell me. I'd say I'd say so based on Mr. Bano. I'd say based on your your son, and I'd say based on other people, including me. You've definitely inspired people. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. As I said, my son, I have both of my sons um, who teach. Yes, my oldest son is a public school teacher, but also an adjunct at college at yes. your university, mm -hmm. St. John's. My other son is an adjunct professor at Kane University. And I guess, yeah, that, and look, I've always made that statement too that coaching is teaching and teaching is coaching. Mm -hmm. And and again, I appreciate it because you yourself, you've been in front of my class and, and taught it a few times and you've done phenomenal. You. Mr. Bono is a wonderful individual. And I, I, I think maybe if one of the reasons why it'd be the legacy is I'm not, teaching them how to be teachers, and I never taught you how to be a teacher, okay. but we've talked about teacher. what it is, and I think that's the key um, to teach someone who wants to be a teacher, if that's yeah. the right language, that let's talk about it. For example, I, I was talking to Mr. Bottle today, he said, why did you jump ahead so quickly to World War I? He said, well, here's, here's the thought, and, I, and it worked today. We've got a week to go before Christmas, because we're giving the test tomorrow, but all next week, they're all gonna be thinking about Christmas. It's gonna be out of it. So today I started World War I, and when you were in my class years ago, I showed some of the same thing. We got photos, we got movie images. Mm -hmm. I showed them some of the faces of the war. It was silence. They were so riveted because it's interesting to them. And I said, the reason I jumped ahead to World War I is at least I know all next week, they'll be interested in it. I'm interested in it. Yeah. And what I've learned too, this again was from Professor Binder, I'm not interested in the subject matter. The students aren't even going to be close to the <laughs> subject matter. It's not. And at the very least, if I'm interested in the subject matter, at least I'm enjoying doing it, as I know you do also. Mm -hmm. But today, that focus hit. And then, as you also know, um, on those Fridays, at the end, because if we do our work and we just do it as we need to, I have my funky Fridays. We just, Christmas season, play a fun, we call funky Christmas video, some kind of music. Do a Beatles thing, do a Bruce Springsteen thing, do a Run DMC mm -hmm. thing, um, to just bring the whole focus. And I guess over the course of years, I found out that yeah, if you want to call the word legacy, it certainly is. Okay. And but then again, something I was told a long time ago that I know I say to you: mm -hmm. go to your strengths. What is your strength when you're in front of the room, and just go with that. And that's what I know. Mr. Bono had he had that enthusiasm. Yusuf has that enthusiasm, Mr. Weir has that enthusiasm, uh, Mr. Scafuri, but they also have their own knowledge and their subject behind them. And sometimes I find oh. that people again. Oops. I know I talk too much, Matt. <laughs> this time this time it was low battery. Jeez. Oh. As you were saying. No, I say, um, sometimes I get a sense that people um, are restrictive of themselves to bring forth their own personality and their own knowledge. And I think that's the key. And as I guess you keep on going back to Bono, he knows too. You also got to keep some humor in the darn thing. <laughs> you just have to. Um, and it's also a way of just dealing with life. Mm -hmm. So that's very that's very interesting that you're talking about with dealing with life. And just for a final point, where do you see yourself in the future? A long time ago, not in the galaxy far far away, <laughs> but a long time ago, uh, I think when I just got out of college. I was one of those questions, but at least you didn't ask it this way. A person said to me, where do you see yourself in five years? And I simply said to him, come back in five years and ask me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I enjoy being here teaching high school at Harrow. They want me back and I, I wanna, wanna be here. Maybe in five years I'll still be here, maybe I won't, I, I don't know. You live in the moment. Exactly, I live in the moment. I know we have to get through Christmas and we have to get